Yesterday, in an extraordinary single act of defiance, this young unarmed protester brought a column of tanks to a standstill. My name is Adrian Brown. I'm the Beijing correspondent for Al Jazeera, and I was here in this city more than 30 years ago covering the start of the pro-democracy movement and the aftermath of the brutal suppression of that movement. I've come today to Rattan Park. It's in the centre of Beijing. It's one of my favourite places in this city. It's a park that predates communist times and it's a good place to, I think, reflect on those tumultuous events of 30 years ago. I arrived in Beijing on May the 4th, the day that a million students marched across the city. The march was led by a charismatic 21-year-old student called Wu Kai Shi. Now, the students had begun appearing on the streets of the Chinese capital several weeks earlier, following the death of a man called Hu Yabang. He'd been a liberal in the Chinese government and had been purged several years earlier. His death was the trigger for an outpouring of grief and the students really believed in what Hu Yabang wanted. He wanted to see a loosening up of things here in China. He wanted freedom of speech. He wanted freedom of assembly. He wanted, in many ways, what the students were now demanding, which was for the Chinese government to deliver on promises enshrined in the country's constitution. We are patriotic. We are not trying to overthrow the, the government authority, and we hope we can have direct dialogue with, with, with authority talking about a lot of things. I don't think this is a very radical request. So I presumed at that time that government will eventually agree with, with us. They wanted democracy, but also they wanted tougher measures against corruption. Gradually the movement grew, and by the first week of May, Tiananmen Square became occupied by hundreds of thousands of students. Tiananmen Square, of course, is a ceremonial part of Beijing. I think politically or legally or, you know, rationally speaking, we are blameless. That part I am pretty confident with, but um, morally, I don't know. That's, that's another thing. Like, I, what, if, what, if, what if there's this one person who was shot and dead? Uh, were in that place because he heard uh, a speech that given by me. By the third week of May, the government has started to lose patience and it declared martial law. But this didn't deter the students and the occupation continued. But by then, the protest movement had started to sort of peter out. Around about early June, June the 3rd, the evening, afternoon of June the 3rd, a decision had clearly been made to use force to finally end the occupation, to clear the students out of Tiananmen Square once and for all. And that, of course, is when scenes happened that were to shock the world. Meanwhile, the men who control the army, and perhaps now the government, have issued another ominous warning. Stay off the streets or face the consequences. I remember very clearly on the afternoon of June the 4th, walking towards Tiananmen Square. The army had now essentially regained control of the center of Beijing, but still they were firing warning shots at protesters who were getting too close to the square. I remember very clearly seeing two bodies that had been flattened by tanks, the tread marks still visible, and there were burning barricades wherever you looked. It was a picture of anarchy, but still people were defiant, but they knew now the protest movement was over. We expected some bloodshed, uh, mainly by, you know, we will be hit by the police baton perhaps, and that's what we have expected. Life ammunition? No, never. Here in Beijing, it is just another day. There'll be no open displays of dissent, no open displays of remembrance. As far as the Chinese government is concerned, they were responsible for putting down a counter-revolutionary riot. And just a few days ago in Singapore, a defense minister justified the actions by the army at the time. 
，是一场整治的动乱。我们中央采取了果断的措施，军队采取了措施，哎，对这一场这个这个动乱，制止和平息了动乱，啊，这是正确的法律。And I think as long as the Communist Party is in power here, there'll be no overturning of that verdict on Tiananmen Square. That will be the line they will take for as long as I say the Communist Party remains in power.